Now, does it also help you in that it's a one-man show to have the technology? I think so. I don't yeah. think it's a crutch either. Some people yeah. might say he's hiding behind or in front of a, a video screen or using it to kill what is otherwise, you know, some people might object to technology. Right. And I'd say they have a right because a lot of people just throw a video screen behind them and say it's a multimedia show and throw some lava lamp images and they think, <laughs> if you use it and if you think about what you're putting on screen, if you always consider, okay, what are people looking at now? They're looking at if, if you think about it and design it, mm -hmm. it can be really useful. Yeah. And I try and think about these things a lot, mm -hmm. maybe too much. <laughs> but I think what, what comes across in this play, and especially in another play, A Duke Called Bigger Than Jesus, yeah. is that the solo performer is never, w you're always, there's always an audience and there's always an image. Mm -hmm. And when you're dealing with something like The Simpsons, which is a lot about image, mm -hmm. and Christianity, in the case of this other play, Bigger Than Jesus, yeah. the image yeah. is, is a very important theme. Absolutely. So now, would you say that the one-man show is kind of your thing? <laughs> Yeah, is that I've, what you enjoy uh, the most? I, I like it, but in this other play that I'm doing with him, it's this nine-hour play with nine actors. So very, very different. Yeah. I love actually speaking to someone on a stage. There's a lovely energy, and you're acting. Yeah. Being on stage is more performing alone. I'm not acting. Right. So when I'm doing McHomer, I'm performing. Okay. And there's a lovely energy to that because I'm in absolute control of every moment. I mean, the technicians could all of a sudden leave, and I wouldn't be in control. <laughs> but there's a, there's a certain language on stage where... Uh, what's conveyed is this performance energy, in my case, which is very high, high energy, pretty virtuosic, and I, I always try to impress people. It's part of the selling game of being an actor, too, yeah. is you're also trying to impress people mm -hmm. by either being a good actor or a good mimic or this and that. And altogether, the package is very satisfying because at the end of the show, people think, wow, that was one guy who did that. Yeah. And that's part of the appeal of solo shows. Yeah. Not all solo shows. Some solo shows could just be a guy standing on stage telling a story in one light. That's a very different show than the ones I do. What are you most proud of about this production? This play, I think, has satisfied two very extreme camps of Simpsons fans and Shakespeare fans. Yeah. And I've done conferences for Shakespeare scholars, and they have been equally amused and impressed by this show. Right. And those, I never thought I could bring those two people together mm -hmm. into, a, into a room. And this show, has had this staying power, not only because the, the source material is good, The Simpsons, Shakespeare, been yeah. around for a while, yeah. uh, but because the execution of it is such that it makes for a one dysfunctional family does another. It's a good one joke show that I push about as far as it can go. Yeah. And overall, it just, it just leaves people, you know, laughing, standing, whatever your reaction is. It's a satisfying 75 minutes, both for me and for the audience. What, uh, how would you define good theater? Um, I, I guess theater that I actually listen to, that I'm engaged with, often uh, Shakespeare is performed, and I've seen a lot of good Shakespeare, I've also seen a lot of really rotten Shakespeare, mm -hmm. and I consider it, if I'm not listening, mm -hmm. regardless of if I've had enough coffee or not, if I'm just not engaged, if it's not interesting on stage, yeah. or if the actor is not interesting, I, I lose it. So theater that is quote-unquote masturbatory, that's all about you know, the perf performer getting into a state. Yeah. I'm not really interested in that. I, I, yeah. Theater is a, is a medium that communicates live with an audience. And if you're not communicating, uh, then, you know, there's, that's bad theater to me. So you must have kind of developed your own kind of philosophy. It's tricky. I'm always questioning my own philosophy. I, I, my shows end up being, uh, you know, I don't know if you write, but I, I, they be, I create to sort of form a worldview about things, and a worldview is very complicated. Mm -hmm. And my worldview about religion came from years of being, a, you know, growing up Catholic, and it ended up in bigger than Jesus, which is a way for me to keep, to channel for me to keep questioning what I'm doing, talking to people, uh, engaging with the world. Yeah, McHomer is one way of engaging with the world, but it's more of a silly show, right? It's entertainment, and I love that part of me because I'm a big ham, you know. But there's to. probably deep things in it. That's there what are. I'm thinking is going to happen tonight. Haven't seen it uh, yet, but... <laughs> it's fun. You know, it's not going to be the, the, the world's m newest... It's not going to teach no. you anything new about Macbeth other than the fact that Shakespeare was pop culture back then. And yeah. this, if anything, is yeah. making Shakespeare exciting to a lot of people who would never, ever give it a chance. Right. But uh, this new play I'm writing uh, is called Hard Sell, and it's about the world of marketing, but you know, a lot of what I do, including this moment right here, is, is promotion and marketing. And yeah. I sit there somewhat left of center and I try and formulate a worldview about, about our society and about advertising and how we live within it, but also very aware of the fact that I'm 
I sell and we all sell and mm -hmm. I can sign a contract with Disney for seven years hosting a, a TV show called Just for Laughs uh, even though I spent many years not buying my kids Disney uh, right. dolls you yeah, know so yeah, our yeah. own hypocrisy I'm just fully aware of it to answer your question I'm constantly challenging it and yes I probably have a philosophy but if anything the philosophy is if you know you don't know and if yeah. you don't know you know, you know it's yeah. sort, of, sort of Joseph Campbell type of you know maybe loose mythology but essentially as soon as I think I know something uh, you I, really I re don't. I, you know, <laughs> and as soon as we all we all think we know a lot of stuff and we you know we, we should probably question that because things change so fast well I find the older I get the more I don't know whereas bef when mm -hmm. I was younger I thought I knew it yeah. all you know <laughs> yeah which is why we tend to sh we become more conservative over the years because the, the, the you know the when we're young and we're idealistic, we think we know everything, and yeah. and it's great that the energy of idealism and of beliefs, and you know, everyone believes in something, and I, I love it. I just yeah. I've always been one to sit and sort of weigh both sides and really formulate a very careful approach, which is why it takes me three years to write a show, yeah. and that because it it's hard. Think one needs to think hard about things, yeah, <laughs> because it informs not only your life but your the life of your kids. I'm trying to raise my kids a certain way. And that's hard too, you know, it's, it's all, yeah. it's very complicated. <laughs> uh, what's the best advice you've ever been given? <sighs> stay broad, don't stay, don't narrow in. I think uh, along the same lines as before, yeah. uh, people tend to think they, these days, to be successful in the market, they need to, you know, know one thing. And I've always, I always tell students, whatever you do, uh, create your own work, however it is. Whether you're an accountant, stay creative somehow, yeah. and and somehow stay broad. Yeah. Take a tap dancing class, you know. Absolutely. Listen to music. Take pull yourself away from your computer for a while. Good advice. Now, our magazine deals with the art of living. Mm -hmm. How would you define the art of living? <sighs> art of living. Uh, <laughs> with a certain amount of dignity, I very much admire people who, uh, like Stephen Lewis, for instance, is someone who, who is just utterly selfless. I'm very selfish, we're all selfish to a certain extent, but I come across people like him who are giving without regard for spin or for style or for all these things that we all deal with, mm -hmm. uh, dealing in lies all the time. You know, we're in the midst of political, two political campaigns, right? Yeah. Uh, the art of living I get, is, I guess, a certain amount of honesty. My wife is extremely honest and demands it of me. Mm -hmm. uh, being honest and, and s certainly being um, creative, honest, and, and somewhat dignified in the way you handle yourself in the world. Mm -hmm. That's great. Well, best of luck Thank with, you so much, uh, with all your projects and Thanks. actually Bigger Than Jesus is what, it's going to film now or it's on? Uh, it's, it's it, we're still, film? we just had a, a big, um, we thought the CBC was going to shoot it, but they deemed it too controversial. Oh, uh, <laughs> so big surprise. Yeah, no, I, I mean, it is somewhat controversial, but I, I wasn't surprised. But we have several other people interested and we're going to follow through on it. Good. Yeah, keep, keep following that. Thank you. <laughs>